ways that you can I have a couple trade accounts at some of the bigger fiber. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're probably one of my subscribers, and I love you. This is the channel where I document my fiber adventures and sometimes people learn something from them so that's pretty neat. Somebody's a little bored and but he's excited because he loves to look out that window. At the beginning consistency was like a really big deal to me. For whatever reason I wanted to spin a consistent yarn. I've kind of gotten away from that in the past probably five years or maybe even a little bit more because a lot of the time I think about it and I'm like if I want like a perfectly consistent smooth yarn I'll just buy a machine spun yarn I don't hand spin so that it can look like a machine made it every once in a while I practice there's really two reasons why I do that sometimes you want to knit a cable sweater and you want a really smooth consistent yarn because you don't want like bumps in your yarn changes in thickness to take away from the cable pattern makes sense right so the second reason for me is that I dye a lot of my own fibers and then there are times when I want it to look machine spun but it can only be out of the fiber that I dyed because that's why I'm like that. I'm so controlling about certain things you guys. That's why I have learned all this stuff so that I can control every aspect. Nothing weird about that right? If you've been watching a while you may have seen a big dye day that I did. I think it posted in April and I did it in March. I dyed three different fibers and then I carded some of them into bats and one of them I left as top, it was Falkland. While I was trying to learn to spin a consistent yarn, I got a couple tips and pretty recently I got one that is making a huge difference for me that I've never heard before and it's kind of surprising. If I've heard it before, I didn't remember or didn't make sense to me at the time. There are three things that I think are really important. If you really want a consistent yarn, number one, I believe is top is better. And of course that's only an opinion and you can find as many opinions as there are spinners and all the opinions have some values. I just think if you are spinning from roving or a bat, the whole purpose of roving or a bat is that the fibers go in different directions. That's called a wool and prep. And sometimes when you're spinning from a bat or from roving, you're gonna get fibers that are going like this across and you're gonna grab the middle and they're gonna fold like this as you spin. And that's just gonna happen. There's literally no way to turn it back into top. When you're spinning top, all the fibers go in one direction and it does make it easier to get a more consistent yarn. So that's number one tip. Number two. Okay, so this one could be controversial because I'm pretty sure some people are not gonna agree with me. If you really want your finished yarn to be more consistent, one of the ways that you can achieve that in the finished yarn, if your singles aren't as consistent as you want them to be, is more plies. So like, and this is just, again, an opinion, but the more plies you have in the yarn, the more they kind of just even themselves out. I could go into the super long expl technical explanation, but you guys know I'm not technical, and also that's boring to me. The more plies in the yarn, the more any kind of unevenness in the singles will just balance itself out. So tip number three will actually be shown during the spinning because I filmed it during the spinning and it's kind of important that you actually see the top in action. I hope this helps somebody spin a more consistent yarn if that is your bag and I will show you the finished yarn at the end. tip that I have received that has helped me the most, Luther just got green back in here, 
is to take like one staple off of what you're spinning at the beginning. I did this already, but I didn't film it. I'm gonna grip it right on the end and pull some out. This is Falkland from RH Lindsay, and you can see the whole length of the staple. That's pretty long. I bet you it's five inches. Wow. Dang, no wonder it's spinning so nicely. So, the tip that I have gotten that has helped me with consistency more than anything else, this is about one staple. And as you draft, if you draft the whole length of your staple, if you draft more than the length of your staple, you get fewer at the end. See how it thins out way down here and there's like just wisps left? So what happens is if you draft more than the length of your staple in your fiber, you get kind of like little puffs. So it's thinner here and then it puffs out and then it gets thin again. So the best tip I ever had it was pull out a staple at the beginning, then you draft about half of your full staple length because then you're always pulling in more fibers as you're thinning down so you will stay more consistent. And if you don't know or can't remember exactly what half the staple length is, you can make yourself a, like a control card of it and just like punch a hole in it and put it, hang it from the front maiden on your wheel. Putting this on your post-it or whatever kind of thing you want to use. It's hard to show. Mark the top. And then I would say the half my staple is right about here. What I'll do is put this on the front of my maiden. So as I'm drafting, I can see this distance, this length right in my eye line. And it really helps me remember to keep my drafts less than that distance, but it also just helps me remember how long it's supposed to be because sometimes I'll spin something for a couple of weeks and I might forget exactly in my mind how long it should be. I did not write anything on the tag. This is 100% Trish, okay? I wrote nothing. I don't know how many yards this is. It was eight ounces, I believe. It is Falkland top. It might be a little bright. I think it's okay. And you can see it is very, very, very consistent. It's a three ply. And one thing that was kind of interesting is that the green that was in this top just kind of disappeared into the gray. This is the thickness and it's a three ply. So it's a pretty thin single. I hope this helps somebody spin a more consistent yarn if that's your bag. <sighs> so a couple of you guys have asked for stuff. I just wanna give you a heads up of what's coming up over the next few weeks. Although I never know if something's gonna come up in between. I am gonna show you guys how to make a jumbo pom-pom with the Clover pom-pom maker. I talked about it a while back. I talked about the fact that I've never had a successful pom-pom before until I got these. And I actually have, I think, all the sizes that are available. The October Paradise Fiber Spin is coming up. The yarn is literally right away under my hand, but I can't show it to you, obviously. That would ruin it. And I changed it a lot. Let's just say that. So if you got that top and you looked at it and you were like, I don't think I really want confetti colored yarn, um, that video is for you because I changed it a lot, but not with a lot of work and it's amazing. It is just like, 
I wish I had enough for a whole sweater. I'm heading to the knitting today, so I'm pretty excited. So I will see you guys soon. I hope everything's going great, and I hope your corner of the world is getting healthier. I hope you're healthy, I hope your family is healthy, and I will see you guys soon. I love you, bye.